Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round 12 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament. It's Yang Shishtov Duda versus Alireza Firuja and it uh, does remind us of the uh, of the previous game Alireza played against Nepo where he lashed out with the pawns on the king side. Here it's similar to that but with, uh, with, uh, with a bit of a twist uh, <laughs> during the game as you'll see. So let's check it out. Uh, we have a nice photo of the matchup. There we have it, Duda versus Alireza with their, uh, with their suits and shirts match matching the color of the pieces they are they are playing with uh, so you know just two two very nice gentlemen playing chess let's enjoy that for a second and then we are off uh, as the game is quite uh, uh, quite enjoyable uh, do that with the white pieces opens with the d4 we have knight to f6 c4 e6 knight to f3 and d5 so a standard queen's gambit declined knight to c3 and the semi-slav defense pawn to c6 we have e3 knight b to d7 and queen to c2 so that's uh, that there's just a whole lot of theory uh, from this position, uh, nothing new happening here uh, for the moment. Bishop to d6, bishop to e2, and both players castles. So castles, castles, and now d captures on c4. We wait, uh, we force white to waste the tempo as the bishop already uh, played the move. Bishop captures, pawn to b5, bishop back to d3, and bishop to d7. a3, uh, Alireza grabs more space on the queen side, pawn to a5, and now a uh, Pawn to e4, grabbing more space in the center. e5 by Alireza, forcing some trades on the e5 square. d captures, we have knight captures, knight captures, bishop captures, and now pawn to h3. Uh, this is very much needed because uh, you want to play f4. If you play f4 right away, then bishop d4 checking h1 and knight g4 with queen to h4 and knight to f2 coming. This is just terrible for white. So h3, we are going to play f4, but at some point in the future, uh, bishop to a6 by Alireza. This is the f the, the start of uh, the game. Basically, it's not a new move, but it's an incredibly rare one. Uh, I believe um, uh, so far employed only by Alexei Shirov, one of the uh, greatest attackers ever. And and uh, Alireza finds inspiration in, in his games. He uh, should have used it twice. He used it once against Levon Aronian, one against, once against Daniel Dubov. And even though uh, uh, both of those, those games ended in a draw, uh, they were uh, quite uh, quite the games. So bishop to e3, uh, Duda just continues development, and pawn to b4 now, attacking the knight and offering a trade of light square bishops. So Duda goes for the trade, bishop captures, b captures on c3, bishop back to c4, and now c captures captures on b2. Uh, Alireza gets a pass pawn on b2, but rook a to d1 attacks the queen, and now comes the tricky move, queen to e7. Now offering uh, uh, Duda to play bishop to c5 to go after the queen and the rook, and this is exactly what Duda does. And it's exactly what Shirov played in both of his games against um, Aronian and Dubov, as it's uh, very well analyzed, uh, but it's uh, incredibly tricky. Bishop to c5, we've reached a position from the thumbnail, and now of course the bishop cannot be captured we simply play bishop captures on f7 and pick up the black queen so of course something else has to be played alireza plays bishop to c7 uh, queen to c7 and now bishop captures on f8 rook captures on f8 and pawn to g3 now uh, it's important to, to block this diagonal and also we want to have support for pushing f4 and uh, in the game uh, against uh, aronian uh, alexei shirov played pawn to c5 and uh, this is in fact uh, the the strongest move uh, uh, sorry in the game against Dubov that was played, uh, but uh, Alireza plays something uh, completely uh, different and something very, very awesome. So here, c5 is one of the engine's top recommendations, the move that Chiro played, other suggestions are something like queen to b6 and g6, but Alireza plays g5, uh, and it is now, uh, I'm sure you can imagine, as of move 22, that we have a completely new game. So a lot of theory um, up to this point, but the g5 uh, is just incredibly interesting, because if Duda doesn't play that one move, that gives him the advantage, uh, then he's just going to be worse. Now, uh, rather, it, the, the position might even be equal. Uh, it's just that Alireza knows way much more uh, about the position than, than Duda does. Uh, and he finds it. He finds pawn to f4. This is the absolute uh, strongest move um, uh, white can play here. Uh, the reason is g captures g captures, uh, and now you, you kind of have to capture the, the pawn here, or you don't. Uh, uh, Alireza did capture it. You could also play bishop to d4 check, and after king to h2 just cement the bishop with c5, the bishop guarding the pawn on b2 looks very nice for, for black, but after e5, uh, the uh, position really opens up towards uh, uh, towards that black king, and it's not going to be easy. The bishop also very strong. So white would be better here. Uh, it's just a question of uh, how 
how much. Uh, but Alireza grabs the pawn instead, and this is uh, even more trickier. Uh, queen captures on b2 by Duda, attacking the knight here, uh, and now knight to h5, defending the bishop on f4 one more time. You could also play bishop to e5, but um, after bishop to e5, we play queen to g2 with check, king h8, and now it seems like black is doing okay, but there's this very tricky queen f3 move uh, that leaves the black uh, basically without a move. You can give this one check, but after uh, king to h1, uh, it's it's a crazy position. Both players are attacking, but it's just that uh, you know black black doesn't have anything more than the attack, and white also has the attack. But white white also has the extra material. White has a rook for a knight, so white would be much better here. But Alireza goes knight to h5 instead, and now uh, we have to do some rook lifting here. Rook to d3 or rook to f3 is the way to go. Duda chooses the d rook. Uh, queen to e7. Uh, now uh, centralizing the queen. Uh, the the queen's influence is great from from the e7 square able to come to g5 to h4 and so on and now rook to f2 by duda and this is where duda drops the ball uh, quite a lot uh, king to h1 and it will be very very hard to play this position with black it's a, it's a very uh, uh, it's a much needed tempo uh, where you don't really have a good move here uh, because if you play queen captures on e4 for example we just force a queen trade queen to g4 queen to g uh, queen to g2 check and now after this trade captures captures we are more than happy Happy with this end game, we're up the exchange. Of course, the uh, position will be completely, uh, completely winning for us. Uh, there's not, not not a good way to play this with black. So basically, what you would have to do after king to h1 is go for bishop to e5 instead, attack the queen, and now after this uh, queen to g2 check, uh, a very important tempo. King h8, queen to g4, another important tempo. Knight to f6 and queen to f5, and white's position uh, improved drastically with black uh, struggling to, to, to even find the move here so that's the way to go but in the game rook to f2 was played and this allows alireza uh, a free move bishop to e5 now attacks the queen queen to e2 goes after the knight and now uh, alireza plays knight to f6 here uh alireza could go for knight to f4 it's a, it's a very nice idea attacks the queen attacks the rook and it's basically a force to draw uh but uh you know it's important to check it out if queen g4 check we're gonna move the king now rook d7 attacks the queen seems like like uh, a black is getting destroyed. However, there is this queen captures on a3. It looks like a funny moment to grab a pawn on the other side of the board, uh, but it's actually uh, that from this side of the board, we are attacking this side of the, bo of the board. Uh, so that's why it's a good move. And now after something like rook captures on f7, it's a forced line, knight captures on h3 with check, king to g2, knight captures on f2, attacks the queen, rook captures on h7. Uh, for, uh, it looks like white might have something, but there isn't anything. The best white White has this to just force a draw here with queen h5 and go for a repetition here as our good friend the bishop covers the f7 square. So uh, Alireza can just basically grab a draw here with knight to f4, but he plays knight to f6. Hard to say if he calculated everything or he wants more than a draw, uh, but knight to f6 again just allows Duda to play for the win. King to h1, now finally freeing the... Uh, g file for the, for the white rook. Uh, king to h8, black does the same, and rook to g2. We have rook to b8 now by Alireza, uh, trying to get some action on the, on the first rank, and now bishop to a2, preventing this. Knight to e8, uh, and now comes queen to e3. Uh, here again, it's uh, the, the position uh, should be winning for white, but it, uh, it it's just that there isn't you know anything that uh, proves this. Like we could uh, continue improving our position, queen g4, threaten checkmate, uh, knight d6, so the rook uh, defends against checkmate, and now there's even this beautiful rook d to g3 move, where we are again threatening to checkmate the black king with a uh, with a queen sacrifice. But after queen to d8, there's just uh, uh, there's not a uh, there's no forced win here. White is winning, and white should win after some time has passed and some moves have been played. It's just that there's no you know uh, the, the the finishing blow that um, uh, everyone is is hoping to see. But yeah, it is an overwhelming position. Uh, but instead, queen to e3 was played, and now knight to d6 by Alireza, and here rook back to d1. Queen to c5, again, keeping all the tension, is, is very strong for white. Um, it's just, uh, the, the problem is it's not clear how to how to force a win here. White is up material, uh, but uh, you, you just can't uh, get anything decisive. So rook to d1 was played, uh, and now comes queen to f6 by Alireza. Rook to f2, attacking the queen. 
queen g6 and rook to g1 now again putting pressure on the queen uh saying that you will not be able to capture on e4 because i just win the end game but that's exactly what alireza does as uh, you know the the alternative is just terrible once you move the queen we start capturing and uh, then black is just lost so queen captures on e4 queen captures knight captures and now uh duda plays rook captures on f7 and this basically forces a draw uh, a very tricky move to find is actually rook f to g2 uh, now with the idea that uh, okay we're we're still attacking the pawn but if you move the pawn we just deliver checkmate let's not forget about our good friend the light square bishop covering the g8 square so you're not going to be able to do it this way but you can play rook to f8 and now black rook is passive uh, it's it's a very tricky position to play white will always be better uh, but with perfect play probably not enough to win the game but after rook captures on f7 it's just very easy for alireza to, to force a draw here knight to g3 with check king to g2 and now rook to b2 with check forcing a trade of rooks because uh, otherwise you're going to lose the bishop on a2 so rook to f2 rook captures uh king captures and now we have bishop to d4 check nicely connecting winning our uh, material back king captures sorry king captures on g3 bishop captures on g1 and he was in this position on move 41 that duda and um, uh, firuja uh, agree to a draw uh, as there is nothing more to be done here yes uh, lireza is up a pawn but it's uh, you know bishops of opposite color and the black king is uh, way back uh, in the corner on h8 there there is no hope uh, uh, here uh, for, uh, for 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 alireza to, to do anything with his extra pawn of course both of them know this and they agree to a draw uh, so yeah, really, really awesome stuff. So like I said, it's uh, it's uh, it's not really uh, lashing out like in the game against uh, Nepo with that G4, H4. But even that, I, even though everyone is calling it, you know, lashing out, you know, he played too many Blitz games. Uh, without Nepo finding the absolute uh, strongest only line that uh, destroys uh, that idea, uh, it is very much playable. It's just that Nepo found it. Here, Duda did not find it. He, he rushed it a little bit. He couldn't, um, uh, you know, pu push for more than a draw here and here it kind of kind of paid off uh, for alireza he, he gets a draw with the black pieces but still i'm pretty sure he did not play this g5 move to, to get a draw he he prepared this to, to gain um, um, more than a draw uh, and even with the absolute strongest reply from duda it was possible but um, you know yeah it, it's just very very hard to play uh, positions like these uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it let's not forget to, to check out the standings so here are the standings after round 12 Yanni Pomnishi leading with eight and a half, uh, two full points ahead of Hikaru Nakamura and Ding Liren. Then we have Rajabov and Karwana with 6 out of 12, uh, Rapport with 5 out of 12, Duda with 5 out of 12, and Alireza uh, in last place with 4.5 out of 12. So uh, uh, with uh, Nepo leading by a uh, two-point margin, and we only have two more games uh, until the end of the FIDE Candidates Tournament, this means that if Nepo gets only one draw, uh, he wins the Candidates Tournament. So he has, I believe, uh, he still has to play against uh, Duda and Rapport, uh, and if he uh, gets a draw against uh, either of them, them, uh, then Yanni uh, uh, Pomnichi will win the FIDE Candidates Tournament and challenge Magnus Carlsen for the title. Or if Magnus uh, will not want to play, then whoever gets uh, second place will be facing Yanni Pomnichi uh, for the title. So that seems to be the most likely outcome. But uh, you never know. Uh, you know, we, we've seen uh, weirder things happen in the chess world. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Really crazy stuff by by both of them. Alireza trying, uh, you know, with everything he has, but he's just not uh, catching a break here. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Michael Hoff Consulting, uh, Alan Chevalier Moore, uh, Obrad Mishkovic, Jeffrey Cook, and Abhishek Babui for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, until it finishes. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.